All right, all right, all right. It is Wednesday, May 4th. I'm John Zadar, and you're watching On Top and Hot. What a day, folks. First half of the day, very apprehensive with a lot of volatility. Nobody knew what to do because the feds were going to be talking about their tax rate hike today. And it came out just the way everybody had priced it in, just what we expected, and the market went nuts the back half of the day. It was outstanding. Lots of surges, lots of action, lots of volume. So what we're going to do is take advantage of all that. I believe there were lots of stocks running right up to the end of the day, right up to the bell, and there was leftover momentum that we're going to be able to cash in on tomorrow morning when they continue running. Probably just a 10, maybe longer, but I'm calling these 10 a.m. plays. Get in the morning, get out by 10 a.m., take your money, and start the day with a smile. So let's jump on over to Thinkorswim right now, and I'll show you how we go about doing this. So you're looking at Thinkorswim, my free trading platform I got just for signing up with TD Ameritrade. They don't ask for any money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Just keep your account open and you can use TOS just like I am. So TOS does a lot of stuff and one of the things it does are searches, scans. And we're going to do a scan here, come up with a list to go through and we're going to do a search of one cent to three dollars. And I'm only using one filter, last price, nothing else. That list comes up, I'm going to put it in an order of volume. I'm going to put the highest volume to the top because I'm looking for stocks that had a lot of activity. That's where you get your surges. Now we are looking for a Momo play. That's momentum. We're looking for stocks that had leftover momentum at the end of the day that we're going to be able to cash in on tomorrow morning. So what does a Momo play look like? Well, here's an example. Ideally, we want to find a stock that was running right up to the end of the day. The only reason it stopped going up was the bell stopped it. We also want to see that volume climbing up, up, up. We want that MACD to be a huge tsunami. And the RSI, we want it over 70 and in the fire. We want it red. That's ideally what we're looking for. We'll work around it. Now, I've got this list set up with a special feature that I put on here. This yellow two, it can be whatever color you want, but I have it matching to this over here. I can pick any number I want, five purple. I'm going with blue, yellow two. I mean yellow two. So when I click this yellow two, ta-da, I get a quick chart for that company, just that quick. Now I've got a video that shows you how to do this and other simple ways to search so that you can get through stocks real quick so that you don't have to keep bouncing over here, typing in the ticker, coming back here, coming back here, typing in the ticker. No, 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 that's silly. Just watch this video right there. Yep, that's the one. Go find that video. I know Penny Boys is down right now, but by the time you watch this video, we're probably back up. So that video has all the tips to help you set up your searches so you can see lots of charts real quick and even be trading while you're doing it and not miss the stocks that you're trading. So now that we've got this all set up and you understand what we're doing, I am just going to click these and I am primarily searching just the last five to 10 minutes. That's all I'm really looking at folks. These last couple of bars here, I'm looking at the volume, but primarily my eyes are going to be focused here. I'm looking for that high RSI and the blue tsunami. Then I got to get my arrow over here. I got to use my eye to grab that yellow two again. So I'll try to be quick here, but we don't want to miss anything and we'll see what we can find. Now we're going to be looking for stocks that don't have any aftermarket pre-market activity. The reason for that, it's like a champagne bottle. We shook it up. Now we want to put it there until the morning bell. We'll pop that cork and shh. We'll have that blast off real quick and then we're going to be getting out. It's not an all day play. It's just a fast morning play. So when this happens, well, that's the cork being popped. There's nothing left over for the morning. So we want to see stuff stopping right there. Maybe, maybe one right there that squeaked out, but that is it. So this one looked real good. This would have been a candidate. It, uh, no, I get, well, it would have right here. It was in the red high Hi, uh, MACD, price activity. Yeah, this would have been perfect, except it ruined it with all that aftermarket activity. Same thing there. We can't have that aftermarket activity. Now, if it's climbing, you might want to consider it. I mean, you don't want to just scrub something because it doesn't meet every criteria. Three out of four ain't bad. Like this one right there, right? I can see it has some aftermarket activity. There's no doubt about it, but it is still on the climb. What's our RSI look like? 
as close to fire as you can get. It looks to be at 68.51 and fire starts at 70. So that's real close. MACD is high. And the tool I've been using here recently, the Commodities Channel Index. If you go get it and use it, these three bars are on there and they're all white. But I made this one red because if it's going towards the red or anywhere near the red, the price is falling. If it's in the yellow, it's neutral. It's not doing a whole bunch of anything. But if it's going towards the green, towards it, or is on it or above it, we're getting price activity. So this all looks good actually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take CIG, is it? I'll be darned, SIG. I'm gonna take SIG and throw that on a watch list up here so that we actually know what we've got going. Price of SIG is now currently at uh, 269, I think it is. She ended the day at 268. So she's only gone up one penny. Moving down. There's another one. Boy, those are tough to see. All right, the RSI is not as high as I like. She's at 57. We did have volume rising. Price was rising. It is right under the five day. Let me, or the five day, the 200 day SMA. Let me pull that down. Now that's something I like to watch for, folks. Here it teased us. It came up, looked like it was gonna break it, and if it can get on top, folks, that's getting a monkey off your back. That will allow the price, the opportunity to start to climb with some fervor. This was a tease. Now it's right there again, so there is a possibility it is above the signal line, but it was back here too. So you might want to watch this one, ENC. I'll put it up there. It doesn't hurt to put something on the watch list. It doesn't hurt. It's free, absolutely free. All right, get in there. All right, AABB. That's got a lot of people following it. Uh, aftermarket activity, lots of aftermarket activity. You see that strong surge in the afternoon. People were quite happy with the fact that they didn't raise the rates any higher than what they said they were going to. And that in itself caused the market to move. Everybody was already expecting it. So when it happened, they weren't bothered by it. Uh, that could... Nope, she's a pullback. I'm surprised we're not getting more activity, but it looks like the aftermarket has really stowed a lot of thunder here. Look at that push. Boy. And she's starting to come down now in the aftermarket hours. Doggone it. Oh, look at that one. How about that one? Ding, 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 ding. We got a hot chocolate. So she has jumped here from 263 up to 281 at the back half of the day. This is BRFS. Strong MACD, yes, the RSI is on fire, Johnny, and the CCI is crossing up off the green. This is all dynamite. It's all looking real good. This is BRFS. She's currently at $2.81. Now, folks, I, I want you to remember this. You may not have a lot of money to spend, but it's not about how much you have to spend. You can make money on the NASDAQ because you're not paying those transaction fees. That really is gonna make a difference here, folks. Now look, we're looking at a stock here of $2.81. Let's just say that you bought, uh, I don't know, say you bought uh, $56 worth. $56 worth gave you 20 shares. 20 shares, and it jumped here from 263 to 281. Let's call that 20 cents. 20 times 20, you're looking at $4. You're going whoop-de-doo, $4. $4 is almost 10% almost it's about eight percent so you can make money little chunks of money are good look if you were playing a slot machine and someone told you oh that machine does really a, a jackpot but it gives fives and fifteens out all the time would you not play it if you knew you were probably just going to get five or fifteen dollars what would you play it well sure you would because you can do that 10 times. It's not costing you anything to get in and out of these plays. So you can get in, use a little bit of money, ride it some way up. When you feel a little bit nervous, sell. Take a little gain. You can always come back in and do it again and take another little gain. And as you get more money, you can start increasing your investments. But you don't want to spend everything you got because if you make a bad decision or something happens on the market just like that, your game is over. All right, let's jump on back down. Let's see what we got here. DGP. 
TGP had a jump. Now that's something you may want to look for. I look for this all the time. These SMAs are very, very relative to the price. You see how this cut right down through everything. Came down under the 50, that's the yellow one here, and is now come back up and is poking the 50. When price gets up on top of big SMAs, it's a heavy load off their shoulders and it gives them an opportunity to move. And a lot of times they will. You look at this, you see a crossover right there. You see this is pushing up and look at that. It's pushing towards the green and just hit the green and the price shot up and is there. So it's definitely worth adding to our watch list here. DIGP, D-I-G-P. All right, so we don't know if it's gonna actually do anything. Now the other thing I like to look at, and maybe we'll come across one, but we're, we're not doing a search now, but it's a very important thing. When I do a search looking for potential runners that are gonna take off, I look for a stock. Let me see if I can find one here that's close. All right, not real close there. All right, let's just use this for an example. If this price was right up underneath that 200 now, if that price was just sitting there, boy, that is a sign that it's about to break out. You can't do any big movements really until you get on top of that 200. You're carrying around a ball and chain. So I look for prices just under the 200 and I put those on my watch list. The other big thing I like to look for is this yellow. Now it's yellow on my board. This 50 day SMA. If you have a 200 high and the 50 day is underneath and it is coming and just about ready to cross over the 50, ding, 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 hot sign, hot sign. Something's gonna happen there. So we like to look for these crossovers. Crossovers on the MACD, like here, that blue across the yellow, great sign. We look for crossovers. We look for it to cross over SMAs, the price to go over the SMA, and SMAs to cross SMAs. And you always want the lightest number on the top and the biggest number on the bottom. And that's when you get your feather float on the price above the 10. All right, where were we? ADMA. Oh, that doesn't look bad, but that's an hour. Let's come down to five minutes. Still looks good. Yeah, look at that. All right, we did have some aftermarket activity. Tish, tish, tish. We are high on the MACD. We are in the fire on the RSI, and we are definitely in the green on the CCI. This is ADMA on the fly right now. Definitely worth a watch at $2.01. ADMA. Dink. Next, Anthrax. I don't think that's what they're really called. CCO. Uh, that doesn't look bad. Let's see. Price is climbing, climbing, up, up. We did have one bar after market. We are just touching 69.75 in the green, high MACD. Yes, this one definitely belongs up there. This is CCO. CCO is at a price of 259 right now. Let's see here. Phi. There's one that looks like it's still growing. I mean, look, she came up, she dipped, probably hit a high here, dipped, bounced up, and then really fell all the way back to her 200. That is a strong support. It's a thick board. It was hard enough getting through it this direction. It's also hard coming down through it. Bounced off of that, and she is kicking off right now. She's in the green on the CCI. Mid 60s, that's good, I do like that. And she's about ready to do a crossover. So I am thinking FFIE is worthy of putting on the watch list since it doesn't cost us a thing. Uh, another one that's, oh, see now look. You see that price is right up against the 200. Now I wanna go back to 20 day. I wanna see if there's anything set up. A lot of times you'll see it on the 50 on the 20 day. See, we're real close. Real close to the 50 now. So this would get on top of the 50 on the one hour chart, which is a strong chart. And then down here at the five minute, we are about ready to cross the 200 there. So we had a big jump, a big fall, and a big bounce. Everything looks good here, not for a morning run, but maybe for a continuation in growth, if it can get on top of that 50, or 200, my bad, 200. This is C-E-T-X. Currently at 36 cents. Any, any has been a lot of chatter. I've heard a lot of talk about any. She's had some ups and downs these last few days. Still, some aftermarket activity going on, but nothing there for us to look at. 
All right, let's see if we can find anything that jumps out at us. Trying to fly here, get some of these covered quick. Uh, no. Wow, my eyes are being strained. Wait a minute, uh, no. Looks uh, tempting, but it had none of the fixings we were looking for. Now there's one that's still climbing, folks. It is on a, it had it down there, up, 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 a huge jump after market, a dip, pushed it back up, and now it's settled about in the middle, which is a tempered uh, a move. It means, you know, it's calming down. She has fallen here, but she's still sitting on the green just under the uh, fire, and the MACD is strong. BGR at 259 did 1.6 million shares with 13% gains today. I'm going to throw that on there because I just feel guilty if I don't. <laughs> We're going to put that over there now. Oh, I spelt that wrong. It does happen occasionally. B-G-R-Y. Bingo. Let's come on up. Let's see what we got over here. There's another one running just up to the 200. Run, 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 run. Uh, in the green, light on the MACD. However, she does look like she's ready to do something. Let's back this out just to get a better view of what is happening here. All right, she's been down, and it doesn't look like there's a lot of power there. You can see there's a lot of volume, a lot of volume in today. And it, it was happening in the earlier part of the day, too, not just the back half when we got the good news. But this doesn't look very powerful there. Uh, it could it could easily bounce up to here, which would put it up. You know what? I just can't go by it. A-V-T-X. And that is at 39 cents. Now, just out of curiosity, let's go back. What stock market? I'm sure that's on the uh, OTC, right? It's got to be the OTC. No. See that, folks? That is a NASDAQ stock at 39 cents. Now, on the NASDAQ, NASDAQ stocks cannot go below a dollar. If they stay below a dollar for, I think it's, is it 10 days or 30 days? It may be 30 days. It may be a wee bit longer. But if they're down there too long, they get a warning from NASDAQ. You got to get your price up or we're going to send you down to the OTC market. Ooh. <laughs> so it's a big deal for them because it costs a lot of money to uplist to the NASDAQ. And nobody wants to do that again. Nobody wants to lose their place on the major markets. Guaranteed. And then $3, you got to be $3 to even get onto the NASDAQ. So at 39 cents, this is a very cheap price that could get a lot of activity just because the price has to be lifted. I don't know exactly how you go doing that without investors wanting to lift it, but that is news to know. So that was a NASDAQ stock at 39 cents. Look at that drop. Okay, we're coming back in on the five minute. Wow. See, now that could be a good recovery if they didn't have any bad news. Who knows what happened? EPCM. All right. That's a beauty there, folks. That's a beauty. I like her. Ran all the way up and kept going. I don't like the aftermarket activity, but boy, look at this. She is on fire. Humongous tsunami. She is pointed up, running off of the green now. Of course, we are putting EPZM on our morning watch list. And what is her price? 73 cents. And what market is she on? She too is on the NASDAQ. See, so don't think NASDAQ stocks are all expensive. Now, if you've gotten accustomed to buying sub penny stocks, yeah, this may be more expensive. But you know what's great about this? When you're in an OTC stock, let's say you buy it at a nickel and it falls one cent. One blooming penny from five to four cents is 20% of all that you invested in it. Gone. Just that quick in one move, 20%. Here, for you to lose 20%, you would have to go down one-fifth of this would be uh, one about 15 cents. This would have to fall about 15 cents for you to lose that same percentage, 20%. You can make a decision. You have time to decide if you want to lose that full 20% or you only want a 10%. But on the OTC market, not a lot of choice, just a lot of suffering. So that's another great thing about being on the NASDAQ. No transaction fees and you've got more time, more percentage points that you can move. So we do like this one, EPZM. Did I put it up there? I did. Now what do they say? We've got this blue dot and red dot here. They're giving us some information. They have earnings coming up on the 10th and the earnings conference 
also and that will be before market so on the 10th these people will be doing their earnings and when the market opens you'll see how well they did apto that's our next one not good falling down Ooh, this one just broke the 200 folks now the last time she broke the 200 she went from a dollar fifty to a dollar fifty eight there and back here she went from a dollar forty six to a dollar sixty one it gives you an idea the volume is strong we got strong volume at the end of the day as a lot of companies did get she was growing slowly but after market she took one heck of a jump a big jump threw herself clear over the 200 and is holding her position there. She jumped from 141 to 144, but it's not how far she moved, it's where she moved. She got into a position of power. And look at this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This looks beautiful. Come on, folks, that looks beautiful. We gotta put B, B, L, N. Now, of course, you can go do some DD. You can look up these stocks, see if there's some catalyst or news. There may be something extra that's gonna help it move tomorrow. I don't know anything about them. You could be ahead of the game just by doing that. Babylon Holdings, just out of curiosity, that is on the New York Stock Exchange. How about that? CTRM, oops, what do you mean I can't look at it? <laughs> of course I can look at it. Uh, did, did I get CTRM over here? I don't think we did. Or did I get it? I'm not worried, it's there now. No, nope. lots of aftermarket activity. Oh, she's ripping. Ooh, she took a big jump after market. Now look, folks, there's a perfect example of what I'm talking about, about the 50. She's under the 50, doing nothing. Once she got on top of the 50, the weight was off her shoulders and she could bounce. <laughs> bounce, just like that. So you got a huge bounce up, and this is normal. Normally when somebody comes up over top of an SMA, they're going to come back down and tap it. Sometimes you got to double tap before it takes off, and it can be a little nerve-wracking definitely can all right let's see what we've got going here these are all mixed up in percentages what's this all right so we had a high I want to see if that was a high bubble no it wasn't a high but it did break to 200 as you can see right there she was above the 200 fell yesterday took a big drop don't know what the news was but look at that recovery folks just a big cup and handle there, right? Right back up. She's over top of the 200 now. Now, she doesn't show a lot of activity for the two, 200. Let's go back uh, 20 days. So she's just approaching the 50. I've noticed that. If she's approaching the 200 on the five minute, it's normally the 50 on the 20 day because it's one fourth, right? 50 is one fourth of 200 and 20 days is one fifth of five days. So you normally have the same setup on each side. So this has also got the 200 day haul pushing up right now. That is a good sign. You got a good hook right there, about ready to do a crossover and everything is moving up. So this could be a surprise one here, another B. I'm gonna bring our scan back here. I'm actually gonna throw this one up here. B-R-D-S, birds. This is a dollar seventy-six, and this one is on the New York Stock Exchange. Wow, very surprising. AFFU, trying to get there's another one breaking the two hundred, folks. Now I want to see what it's been doing for twenty days. Of course, it's approaching the fifty, right? That's what we say. If you're hitting the two hundred on the five, you're hitting the fifty on the twenty, and it doesn't look like it has a whole lot of action going on here. It's a tease right now. I mean, you could put that on there, but the way I see it, ah, boy, that's a tough call. So because I really can't tell, folks, I'm just going to put that on the list, TMX. Now, you need to put this on a list. If you're just putting this on a piece of paper, that ain't going to help you very much because in the morning, all of this information comes up except the percentage change. That comes up zeros. There's no percentage change pre-market, but I can see the volume. And I can easily click in and look at the chart and see what's going on. So I can see if a stock is getting a lot of attention. Okay, we are moving along. I don't know how long we've been here, folks. I'm trying to cover as much as I can, as fast as I can. What do we got here? This is just over a dollar. She had strong volume at the end of the day. Price rising, stopped, hit a high bubble. Didn't even have a chance to pull back. Let me check the one minute. She may have pulled back on the minute. She did. She hit the high bubble here, pulled back, and bounced. I always expect, I do, 99.9% .9 of the time, if I see a high bubble, I expect a pullback. Now, a lot of times, if you get a strong momentum play where it's just surging, 
No, you don't get it because it's on a momentum. It's just got speed going on. But when it's moving around here and there, yeah, hits a high bubble, I expect to pull back. That's normal. I do not panic. But I also expect it to bounce back if things have been pushing up all that time. So let's back this out to the five minute again. Is this one worth putting on the list? Uh, I'm going to go back 20 days. I, I want to see something here. Well, she did have a big fall, didn't she? She was way over here at $1.15. She's at $1.02 right now. Uh, $1.09 will get her over that. All right, one more peek back. I'm just getting curious now. Nah, it doesn't look like it has a whole lot of oomph. Really doesn't. All right, I'm going to actually pass on this one. You, you don't think I should? Okay, okay, I'll put it in there. Sammy says we need to add this, so we're going to add this. You know, it is free, right? It's not costing us anything to add these. If they fall to the bottom of the list, we don't see them. They don't bother us at all. Okay, where are we at? Five minutes. We're back to five minutes. Oh, boy, that, see, now that's a beautiful chart. That's easy to read. I'd like to see those all day. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. What I'm going to do now is I've got a second search here. This is from Z up. We were looking at A down, and I'm going to start there. So now we got 146 million. We were down to 1 million shares. So now we're back to high, high volume count. Sisks. This, this was a kicker the other day. Boy, look at how flat this was. She took off, took off, took off. She was at $1.11, 255 there. Six. She's been running great for days. Yes, she has, and she's still running, folks. Still running. Six. Now, this is not a Momo play, but come on, folks. That is a trend. That has been running uphill. When it comes down, it hits the 200 and bounces off of it again. But normally, it is sitting on the 50 area, which is where it's at right now. So everything looks kosher with this. I can't say she looks great. She is in the green here. She's just under 60, and she is above the signal line. So I don't see anything that looks dangerous. All right, let me get six in there. Sundial, cannabis company. Not too much. Unique. TGGI, that's definitely a penny stock. That is the one that's supposed to do a reverse merger with the Chinese wine company that is worth $6 billion. They've been saying that for a year. I saw the information. It is true. It is true. It just hasn't happened, and we've heard no news about it happening. STSS. All right, I'm going to start clicking fast here and let my eyes do some guidance. See all that pre-market, aftermarket activity. Okay, I know, but how many charts you think we've gone through already? And there is a, even a faster way to do it where you can just use uh, your arrow uh, on your keyboard. You don't have to use your mouse. Wait a minute, let's take a look at that one again. Uh, no, no, it, it kind of looks good, but not for what we're looking for. But I think we've gone through, oh, I don't know, 100 maybe? And all we're doing is looking at, whoa, technicals. We're looking at technicals. Technicals are a huge part. I know people who trade technicals 100%. They don't look at the news. They don't look at anything that's going on. They really don't even look at the company of the stock because they are in it for short trades. They're reading the technicals. They're riding it as long as it's strong. When it gets weak, they get out. You know what? They have this much loss and this much gains. Though each gain may only be this big, they keep putting it on top and the gains get bigger and bigger and bigger because they know that adding up small gains is the way to big wealth. Trying to hit home runs isn't the way to do it. That's how you put your shoulders out of joint. Oh, God, did it again. Folks, just get on first base. The most valuable player is the guy that gets on first base the most times, not the guy that hits the home runs. He may get a good paycheck, but he is not the most valuable player. And the most valuable player gets a bonus. So... Let's see what we got here. We've got a few more minutes. I'll rip them. See what we can find. Scroll on up here so it's easier for us. Now, I have been enjoying playing the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, folks. I like the stock action. There's a lot of activity over on these small caps. They aren't as cheap. But you know what? I have been making more money in the last two weeks than I have been making in the last six months on the OTC market. The OTC has been bloody hell. All right, there's another interesting one. 
climbed right up to the bell, took a huge drop at the bell, and then took off again. Now we know this is, well, we don't know. I was gonna say it's a NASDAQ or because it has aftermarket, but some OTC stocks do trade aftermarket. Um, this is NTB, NTB, NTB. Someone's gonna have to tell me what NTB is. I'm not quite sure. But anyways, it looks real good. It had a strong bump there. Everything got pushed into right where it needs to be. Everything looks real good. Let's just take a back gander to see how she looks in the long hill run. So, she had a high here in this area of $2.64, which would give you, ooh, I don't know, about 50 cents, which is about 25% uh, gains just getting to right there, right there. And then, she's that close to the 200, she could make a jump for that and take off again. So she could make some good gains if she does what she's supposed to. Is she worthy of going on our list though? Uh, let's see. Uh, God, this is tough. I'm gonna put it on the list. The RSI is right up there by fire and I do like fire. This is TGB. TGB, Tasco Mines. Oh, it's a mining company. I don't much do mines. I'm not much of it. And mines are in the news, folks. Mines are in the news. All kinds of mines. Lately, it has been copper mines. And copper futures have been rising. So copper mines could be something to consider right now. Price reaction all the way to the bell. One poke after the bell. Everything is right where it belongs. High, high, high. We got the whole 200 which is like a 200 day SMA, except it doesn't just average out all 200 days evenly. It averages them out and then gives more credence to current price action. So we get a line that's closer to current time. So this is the 200 day average. This is the current one. Price should actually be down here, but we're way up here. It does look good right now, folks. So I'm gonna throw this on there, V-Ray. And V-Ray is a, just wanna keep you in the loop. That's a NASDAQ stock. So you see how many cheap stocks, that's $2.69. I'm not gonna call it cheap. I too like to buy those sub penny stocks. So for me, a $2.69 stock isn't exactly cheap. All right, this looked good right up to the bell and then she started to fall. We're still on fire here, we're still in the green. She has a chance of bouncing, but that volume fall off on the end, though that's what you expect after market. Uh, I'm going to take a back gander look here, but I get the feeling. Uh, no, I'm going to pass on this one. Just You can't take them all. I mean, <laughs> oh, let's get back down to that five minutes. I don't want to miss anything. All right, so we're down to two million shares now, folks. So we've had to have looked at a couple hundred charts here. All right, there's a big jump. Right at the end of the day, this was doing nothing. Let me back out just a little bit. So she had a fall, that's what it was. She climbed here, fell under the 200 and just came right back up, right back up. So do we expect her to climb? No, that was a recovery, full blown recovery. Even though her technicals look really good, like she should continue, I get the feeling she probably won't. So we are under 2 million now. Oh man, let's take a look here. Uh, 63, leaving the green, getting a bottom out crossover. She could bounce, but she doesn't set up the way we like her to. Another one, strong end to the day. Uh, no. Trying to find one more for us here, a sweet, juicy one. I would like that. Uh, okay, sweet and juicy. Sweet and juicy. So this ran all the way up, kept rising, two bars. When was the last sale? That was at uh, 5.35, woo. So that was a half hour ago. So that's probably gonna be on the NASDAQ too. It is another NASDAQ stock. This one is at 2.23. Started off at two, went to 2.23. That was a 10% gain there in the last hour. And everything does look good. All right, folks, I'm gonna put that up here too. And I'm gonna call that it, folks. I don't know what time it is. I don't know how much time it took to do all of this. I lose track of time. But we are now under uh, two million shares. Uh, let's check this one here, Wish. It had 19% gains. Nah, 
Nothing there. See, I can't stop. Doggone it. There's another one. Oh, see, this is what happens. I start doing this after I'm done doing everything else, and I do this right up until bedtime. I just get stuck doing it. I'm, I guess I like it. Great, great, great. Everything looks hot, hot, hot. This is perfect, folks. This is WPRT. WPRT definitely was running at the end of the day. Okay, that is it. All right, we have generated a good list for tomorrow, and I'm going to share that with you in just a minute. But first, I've got three rules I want to share with you about exiting these Momo plays. Rule number one, when you get in, we're here for the surge. It's supposed to go up, 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 up. If it goes down, when you get in, it starts going down, you get out. No, we're not waiting for it to bounce back. It isn't doing what we think expected it to do and if it's not cooperating you're probably going to lose get out save your money it's a lot like being a soldier a soldier's objective is to win by eliminating the enemy but his top priority is not to get hurt don't get hurt folks protect that money hope is very expensive so as soon as it's going down get out we'll try again tomorrow no worries rule number two get out at 20 25 percent gains now, I know that sounds silly, but here's my reasoning behind it. First off, if you can get used to taking 20-25% gains, which are pretty easily attained by most of these stocks that run in the morning, you could get that over and over and over. Have four out of five in a week easily, and at the end of the month, have lots of these 20-25% and 25 gainers that have added up. So what I do is when the price is going up and hits that 20-25%, that's when I start to sell. That's when I go to my keyboard and start typing in my order. While I'm doing that, the price is still rising. Maybe I even look up to see what's happening. Wasted more time. It's still rising. So when I hit my order, I actually get 40, 50, 60, 70% because it was rising as I was typing. So I rarely get 20%. The other side of the coin is if you're trying to get the absolute most that you can, it goes up, it hits that ceiling, bounces down, you think, oh, that's just a little dip, then it takes a big drop, you say, oh, oh, that's more than a dip, it's a drop, I gotta get out. You go to your keyboard, you start doing your, your sale, it's dropping as you're typing. You look up to see what's going on, it's dropping more. By the time you get your order in, you don't have 20% anymore. You may have even lost some money because it falls a lot faster than it climbs. So I find it not only safe, but actually profitable to get out on the uprise once it hits 20, 25%. And if you do that, you'll make money, I promise. And the last and final rule, that's right, time out. Get out by 10, 10.05 in the morning. There used to be a saying, fool's hour, which was 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning. Now they didn't call it fool's hour because you were a fool if you traded during that time period. They called it fool's hour because you could easily be tricked. Stock can go up, 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 and then boom, fall. Well, that fool's hour turned into a fool's half hour about nine months ago, it seems to me. So I get out at 10, 10 05 because the market all takes a dip. Most of the market stops whatever it was doing and takes a dip. And that dip can easily turn into a fall. And I just avoid that entire situation. I get out. If it has been running, if I'm making money, if everything looks good. Now, understand, I'm not going to get out at 20, 25% if it's going straight up. You know, I'm no fool, but you got to be smart. Don't be greedy. Greed will always take more from you than you get. Just take little chunks. Greed doesn't know how to deal with little chunks. You'll do very, very well. All right. Now let's take a look at those uh, list of stocks. There you go. So that list is primarily for tomorrow morning, but not all of them. Some of those could run through the day, so hopefully you're putting these on your platform so you can watch them through the day. If all you've got is pencil and paper, then that's better than nothing. A list is a good place to start. That's a good place to start. Well, thanks for being here, folks. I've appreciated your time. I hope you've appreciated mine. I know I jumble my words around a little bit. It happens. But I hope I shared something with you important, maybe something new, showed you something that you're going to be able to put to use. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.